in this video, uh, I want to introduce uh, complex numbers. Um, and with, uh, with a name like complex number, um, calling it a number, it comes with a certain type of expectations. Like uh, if you're calling it a number, we should be able to add them, subtract them, multiply. So you should be able to do arithmetic with them. Um, so we'll describe uh, what complex number is and how to do arithmetic with them. There's a lot to cover in this video, so let's jump right in. Okay, so uh, complex numbers. So complex numbers are expression uh, that looks like z equals to x plus i y. So, right, so z itself is a complex number and complex number is described by uh, two coefficients, two real number coefficients, um, x and a y here. Um, x, the, the, the part of the uh, complex number that does not have i touching it, um, that's the real part of the complex number, z. Um, and sometimes we will write uh, uh, capital RE of Z uh, to write uh, the real part of X, sorry, real part of Z. And uh, the real number, which is a coefficient to the, the imaginary number. So remember, imaginary number I is supposed to be the, the square root of negative one, whatever that means. Um, so Y is gonna be the coefficient of that. Um, and Y itself is a real number, um, but we'll call it, uh, imaginary part of Z. And how we denote it is with a capital IM for imaginary part uh, of Z. Okay, and um, I, uh, lowercase i from before, uh, is square root of negative one. Um, most everybody uses i for this imaginary number i, um, but uh, this is inconvenient for certain uh, disciplines. Um, for example, um, in, in electrical engineering, uh, they find complex numbers very useful, uh, but I already has a um, meaning as like a current uh, of a circuit. So uh, sometimes people use lowercase j instead of i. Um, but uh, um, for us, we're going to be using lowercase i. OK. Um, the set of all possible complex numbers, so uh, any combination pair of x and y, real number, uh, that you could use to describe x plus i, y, um, we're going to call that uh, the blackboard font c, uh, kind of like the blackboard font r that we use for real numbers. And we can think of real numbers as sitting inside of complex numbers. Um, so what I mean by that is that if uh, we take the imaginary part and the coefficient of the imaginary part is zero, um, then you can just kind of imagine i y disappearing and um, the, the complex number is itself just a real part. Of, of itself. So you could think of R as sitting inside of C uh, when the imaginary part is zero. So um, how we visualize these uh, complex numbers is with like a, like a coordinate pair of um, points X comma Y. Um, so two-dimensional Euclidean space. Um, and we would usually write these as uh, in parentheses, uh, x is the horizontal component, comma, y is the, the vertical component. Um, so instead, uh, we won't use the parentheses with the comma or ordered pair notation, but we would uh, write it like a, as if we we're adding like a algebraic expression. Um, and the, the part that does not have i in it is, is the real part, that's the horizontal uh, component. And the coefficient of i is the, the vertical um, component. Um, now, um, since we're using this addition uh, notation, you could write z in weird ways as well. You could write 
i y plus x. Um, so you can write the imaginary part before the real part if you wanted, um, and it would mean the same thing. Um, so you could switch the order if you like. Um, and also, if one of the coefficient is zero, you don't have to write them, right? So uh, if I write something like right, z is equal to three i, uh, that implies that the real part is zero because it's missing, um, and then the imaginary part is three. So um, in that example, uh, three i might be somewhere there. Um, Right, um, so uh, you could you could uh, write write anything like that. <clears throat> okay, and um, uh, I sh I should also mention um, that uh, if you don't have a coefficient in front of i, uh, uh, the the coefficient is assumed to be one. Um, or uh, if if I write seven minus i. Uh, the coefficient is negative one there. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Okay, so uh, that's how we visualize them. We, we look at them as two-dimensional numbers. Um, so uh, if you have seen uh, vectors in Calculus 3 course, um, that this is exactly how you should imagine them uh, in the two-dimensional space. And how we add and subtract is actually uh, basically the same as vector addition and subtraction. Right? So if you had two complex numbers, let's say z and w, uh, where z is uh, x plus iy and w is u plus iv, um, how you add these two uh, complex numbers is you just collect the real parts together and collect the imaginary parts together. So um, x and u are the real parts of z and w, uh, respectively. Add those two components, uh, and that's the, the new real part for the sum of those two complex numbers. Um, and you could, you could say the same thing about the imaginary part. So uh, this is like component-wise addition, um, which you do with vectors. Right? And visually, uh, you could you could look at it as adding together arrows, right? So if z was uh, x plus i, y, right, that's x and that's y. Um, you could take the, the complex number that we're adding to, let's say w, um, let's say w is this complex number right here. Uh, if you move, if you draw an arrow from the origin to the complex number itself, uh, and just kind of move that uh, so that the arrow starts from um, the first complex number that you're adding it to, um, then uh, put following those two arrows uh, or the di diagonal of this uh, this parallelogram that we get is going to be the the sum um, uh, geometrically speaking. So th this is, uh, again, uh, if you've seen vectors before, uh, these are pretty much how we add um, uh, vectors. Right? And just look at component-wise addition. Okay. And uh, the subtraction is not, not surprising. It's almost exactly the same, uh, except um, when we're subtracting complex numbers, uh, you could imagine we're adding a complex number where we just take each the real and uh, imaginary component and flip the sign on those uh, real part and imaginary part from the second um, complex number. Um, and uh, it's not surprising what we get at the end there. Um, so that's what we have for addition and subtraction. Uh, before we move on to multiplication and division, um, where things will start to change uh, uh, from vectors, uh, I, wanna, I wanna describe a new term. Um, it's a concept that should be familiar to you, but it has a new name. Um, so when we say modulus of a complex number, 
uh, that's just a fancy way of saying the length of that vector. Um, so uh, here's how we denote it. So if we write uh, absolute value of uh, complex number z, uh, what I really mean um, is the, the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, right? Um, remember, uh, let's see. So if we're looking at x plus i, y, we can kind of draw a right triangle here. Right, that's x and that's y. And uh, modulus, of course, uh, could be thought of as the, the length of the hypotenuse of the right triangle that forms uh, when we draw uh, this, this right triangle. Right? Um, so a couple, couple things that I want to say. Uh, so absolute value is something that we use with real numbers as well. Uh, but this notation is not confusing because uh, if you plug in a real number here, uh, you get the same thing, right? So um, absolute value of x is same thing as square root of x squared uh, plus imaginary part was zero, uh, then zero squared um, doesn't change the value. So square root of x squared is, is absolute value of x. So um, the, the notation kind of uh, kind of is the same, but it shouldn't cause any confusion because it, it means the same thing as um, the usual absolute value with real numbers. Uh, another thing that I want to say uh, is that uh, a lot of you um, who are taking this class might have taken a computer science course before. Um, and in computer science, uh, modulus means a very particular thing, like a remainder after a division. Um, uh, but um, this has nothing to do with the modulus uh, used in programming context. So if you're kind of looking for a connection there, there isn't one. It's just, they just use the same uh, name, uh, but the meaning is different. The meaning just means length. Um, right? uh, yes, okay. Okay. Uh, now that that's out of the way, uh, let's let's talk about multiplying complex numbers. Um, so multiplication in complex numbers is different from vector multiplication. So in Calc 3 course, um, you might have learned uh, the dot product or cross product. Um, what you do uh, in the complex number sense is how you might multiply in algebra, right? So that's why the notation is very suggestive. Um, so if you had two uh, complex numbers multiplying, uh, you just foil them out. So you, you'd multiply. So um, the first part is x times u, and then the outer part, uh, x times iv. So it's i uh, with the coefficient xv. And uh, the inner part, is iy times u, which is just iyu. And uh, the last part, uh, there's two i's here. So i squared uh, yv. Um, but remember, uh, i behaves like square root of negative one. So i squared is just negative one. So this part uh, is the same thing as negative yv. It's actually a real number here um, because I, I squared turns into a negative one, which is a real number. Um, okay, so now uh, you collect like terms. So there's the real part here and here. Uh, collect them together. We just get x u minus y v. Uh, and um, the, the coefficients of i uh, collect those together as well. And that's the imaginary part of the product. <clears throat> okay. Um, this would be a good place to pause um, and uh, see if you can compute this, right? Uh, three plus four i times negative one plus seven i uh, should be uh, negative 31 plus 17 i. Okay, um, you can pause and do it. Um, and I guess I could also do it. So if I FOIL this out,
okay? Um, and been collecting like terms to get some negative three and negative 28, so negative 31. And uh, imaginary part adds up to 17, right? Okay, I hope that made sense. <clears throat> so, um, so multi multiplication, uh, you do it kind of algebraically. Um, and uh, um, that's how you go about it. <clears throat> um, this multiplication is nice. Uh, it has the usual properties uh, as you do with multiplication with real numbers. Um, so associativity. So if you had three complex numbers, um, it actually doesn't matter which order you multiply. Um, uh, you still get the same product in the end. Um, it also commutes, uh, which means Z1 times Z2 is the same thing as Z2 times Z1. So order of, uh, of uh, which factor comes before the other one doesn't matter either. Um, and uh, uh, just like uh, it works with algebra, uh, the, the distributive property also holds um, with complex numbers. So, so all of these uh, uh, are true, which is good. Um, okay, so now on to division, uh, which is actually pretty tricky um, uh, until you know the trick and then, uh, then you know it. Um, so the, the way you divide um, two different complex numbers, re remember um, the definition of complex number, you have to be able to write it in this form. Okay, so uh, whatever that number, uh, oops. Um, we, we have to put it in uh, real part plus I times imaginary part. We have to be able to put it in that form. The trick uh, is to multiply by another fraction um, where top and bottom is the same complex number. Um, it's the same as uh, the denominator of the original um, fraction, except uh, you flip the sign on the imaginary part. So. If you have u plus iv uh, in the denominator, you multiply the top and bottom by u minus iv. Now, multiplying by this should hopefully doesn't change the, the quantity involved, right? Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply the numerator and denominator separately. Um, so I've done that in the next line. So that's the numerator and that's the denominator. Um, so a nice thing about multiplying with u minus iv in the denominator is because this happens. Right? The cross terms uh, looks the same except for the negative sign. Um, so uh, the cross terms cancel out. Um, and what's left, the, the u squared, um, that's a that's a real number, and uh, negative i squared v squared uh, turns into positive v squared because i squared is uh, will change the sign. Um, and now the denominator is a real number. Um, so we have the numerator. Um, uh, so the real part is going to be uh, the real part of the numerator divided by u squared plus v squared. Um, and that makes sense because it's real number divided by real number. We, we already know how to divide things with real numbers. And the imaginary part is the, the imaginary part of the numerator divided by the same um, u squared plus v squared. I, I hope that makes sense, made sense. Um, okay. So uh, try out an example for me. Um, here's uh, a fraction between two complex numbers. Um, and I already wrote the answer here. Uh, try to work it out for yourself. So pause the video and see if you can work it out. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by negative one minus seven i. Okay, so the numerator becomes four i plus eight. And on the denominator, remember, uh, since we're multiplying by um, the sign changed uh, on the, the imaginary part, the cross term cancels out. Um, so all I have to do, I already know that I'm going to end up with the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. So I'm going to save myself. A little bit of work there. OK. Uh, so what do I get? Um, let's see. So I get 25 uh, minus 25i. That's the numerator. And in denominator, I get 1 plus 49. So I guess I get 15 the denominator. Uh, so the real part is 25 over 50. So just simplify them to one half. And the imaginary part is negative 25 over 50, uh, which is um, negative one half i. <clears throat> I apologize for my handwriting. Um, my tablet pen stopped working, so I'm, I'm trying to draw with my finger. So next week, uh, my handwriting should improve. <laughs> uh, OK. All right, so the, the trick is multiplying top and bottom by uh, the, the, the sign change uh, of the denominator. <clears throat> okay. Um, in fact, uh, this thing is something that uh, appears so frequently in complex analysis that we have a name for it. Um, so this is what we're going to call complex conjugate. So if uh, we have a uh, complex number z equals x plus i y. Um, we say z bar. Okay, so you put a horizontal bar on top of the complex number. And what it does is that it doesn't do anything to the real part, just keep it as is. Uh, but you switch the sign on just the, just the imaginary part. Okay, so x minus i y. And we call that the complex conjugate. Uh, of the, the complex number z. Okay. All right, so here are some uh, properties. Um, if you look at the complex conjugate of the complex conjugate, um, you flip the sign on the imaginary part twice, you get back to what you started. Um, so you just, uh, just end up with the original complex number. Um, I hope that's that makes sense. Um, uh, the complex conjugate respects the, the order of addition and multiplication. So if you add complex numbers and then take the complex conjugate, you get the same thing if you take uh, the complex conjugate of each of the, uh, the terms before you add um, and then add afterwards, you still get the same thing. So that's nice. Um, the, the mag magnitude uh, or the, the modulus stays the same. Um, and uh, this, this is kind of what appeared in the denominator. So remember, uh, when we're dividing by complex numbers, we multiply top and bottom by complex conjugate of the denominator. And remember, uh, in the denominator, um, the, the cross terms canceled out, and you always end up with the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, um, which is uh, which is another way to write the, the modulus squared. Remember, so the modulus is the square root of u squared plus v squared. Um, but if you wanted to, if you didn't want to write the square root sign, then 
the, the square will get rid of the square root sign. So in the denominator, uh, we have the modulus squared. Um, okay. Um, and uh, one over z. So if you want to look at uh, the the reciprocal of a complex number, um, you could write it as uh, the complex conjugate divided by the modulus squared. Um, so that's another way to quickly write down um, the reciprocal of a complex number. Um, and if you want to imagine what this looks like geometrically, um, remember this is what the complex number looks like. Uh, if you flip just the imaginary part, so actually this, this is really just x minus i, y, uh, that's the same thing as reflecting uh, across the, the real axis. Um, so that's how you could uh, think about it geometrically, if you want to picture that in your hand. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's see, some of these uh, I ask you to do in the homework. Um, basically, you'll have to carry out the computation on the left-hand side. So write down what z uh, and z bar is uh, on the left-hand side. That's, so x plus i, y times x minus i, y and multiply it out. Um, you could also compute the magnitude of z uh, and then square that. Um, and show that it looks the same on both the left and right hand side. So that's how you would prove all, all of these. Um, okay. Uh, and then here are a few more um, uh, properties that, that are slightly more challenging, um, but I, I don't think it's uh, too bad. Uh, I ask you to do some of these in the homework as well. Um, remember, uh, the real part of z is just the x part. Right, so uh, maybe I could just do the first one. X plus i y plus x minus i y. That's the complex conjugate. And uh, notice that um, the imaginary part will cancel out, and we'll just have the real part two x. But if you divide that by two, you'll just end up with the x, which is the, the real part of the original complex number, um, and so on. Um, uh, the, the imaginary part is slightly trickier uh, because you have to divide by uh, a complex number, not, not just a real number, but uh, it's, I, I trust that you could do it. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I, I should just kind of let you know as um as kind of an expectation of like how how much you should be able to uh, prove uh, in this class, and um, I expect you to be able to uh, prove this type of uh, properties. Um, um, and uh, if if you're not sure how to go about it, that's totally fine. Um, come to the the course uh, uh, Discord and ask and. Um, Somebody will show you how. Somebody or me. Mm. Okay, a uh, couple more inequalities. Um, let's see. So the first two shouldn't be a surprise. So let's see. Okay, so let's say we have a complex number uh, x plus i, y. And um, this, every complex number kind of forms like this right triangle. Um, and note that the length or the hypotenuse is the modulus of z. So each of the legs, uh, which has length x and y, they're both shorter than the, the length of the hypotenuse, which is the magnitude of z uh, or the modulus of z. Um, so this is basically saying that. Um, and uh, triangle inequality. So this is, uh, I think this is 
uh, worth uh, proving. So let me do that. So uh, I'm going to use some um, property from earlier. So remember that I'll start with this. If you multiply a complex number with its conjugate, you'll get the magnitude squared. So what I'll do is this magnitude squared of this guy is the same thing as Z plus W times Z bar plus W bar. If I multiply this out, Okay, this is what I get. Um, this is the magnitude of uh, z squared um, plus uh, the, the next two terms, uh, I, I'm gonna rewrite it this way. Okay, the Z bar times W is same thing as uh, Z bar times W double bar, um, because the double bar is same thing as no bars at all. Um, but now I've written this number plus its complex conjugate, right? Which uh, by a different property here, um, if you take a complex number, add its complex conjugate and divide by two, then you get the real part of the complex number. So this is the same thing as the, uh, I didn't divide by two, so I'm gonna make up for it by multiplying by two. Two times the real part of ZW bar. Okay. <clears throat> And then I'm going to use, um, uh, let's see, uh, this uh, inequality. So the real part of Z or real, real part of Z W bar um, is smaller, um, less than or equal to the, the modulus of the complex number. So, I would get something bigger if I replace this with the magnitude here. Okay. And then um, okay, the magnitude of Z W bar. Uh, is same thing as the magnitude of Z times magnitude of W bar, but magnitude of W bar is something as magnitude of W. Uh, and here I am using this property right here. Okay, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. And this is exactly uh, magnitude of Z plus magnitude of W squared. <clears throat> Okay, what did I prove? Um, I proved that the square uh, of the magnitude of Z plus W is same thing as, or, or less than or equal to uh, square of the magnitude of Z plus magnitude of W. If you square root both sides of this inequality, um, I get the triangle inequality. <clears throat> that took way longer than, um, I should have taken, um, but I hope each of these steps makes sense. Um, and uh, there's what's called reverse triangle inequality, which is also useful. Um, the way to get that is actually, you could just use the triangle inequality. So uh, you use the triangle inequality between, um, let's see, Z plus, uh, sorry. That's not what I wanna write. If I take the um, 
z minus w, then add w <clears throat> by triangle inequality, this becomes the uh, view, right? Um, and then you just bring uh, this term back back to the other side. Uh, then you'll get the uh, the reverse um, triangle inequality, right? Uh, the z minus w plus so z minus w plus w is just z. Um, so that's that's how we get that. Um, okay. All right. Um, I think this is what I want to end uh, the video. Um, I'll see you later.